Well, Connecticut had an ice storm last night, and I'm one of the lucky ones who still has power. So let's get to work looking at anonymous types in .NET. As you know, last week we looked at object initialization. And object initialization allows us to instantiate an object and assign properties all in one line of code. Anonymous types take this to the next step by allowing us to completely skip the step where we declare the class. Of course, what we end up with is a class that has nothing but properties in it, but this can be quite useful in some cases. For example, you might want to create a class that has a display field and a value field so that you can create a list that you can bind to your drop-down list or your regular list box. In the past, we would have had to create a whole new class that essentially had those two properties in it just so we could do the data binding. Anonymous types allow us to avoid that. So in C-sharp, all we have to do to create a new class with nothing but properties in it is to write our famous var c stuff. So we're going to go in here and do var c equals new and then we're just going to start defining our class. So first name equals Dave last name equals Bush and then our ending semicolon or our curly brace and semicolon. Now what this does is going to create a brand new class for us with a first name property and a last name property of type string. Uh, if we had some kind of numeric property in here my int equals zero now we have a my int property that is of type integer. To do this in VB, come over to our VB code, do the same type of thing. We're going to go dim c equals new with, so far it's exactly the same stuff that we did, open curly brace, first name equals Dave, last name equals Bush, and then and then and ending curly brace. Now, there's a slight difference between what the VB does and what C sharp does. In C sharp, when we created those properties, what it actually did is it created read-only properties. Now, a lot of the old documentation that you'll find on the web will still indicate that those are read-write. But if you look at some of the newer documentation, or if you actually try to access them yourself with your browser, you'll find out that they really are read uh, read-only. In VB, though. Uh, when we create this statement, what we end up with re is read-write properties. If you want the property to be read-only, you need to prefix it with the keyword key. All right. So now first name is a read-only property and last name is a read-write property. You'll notice that the syntax in both cases is very similar to what we used for the object initialization, but in this case we've left out the class keyword. Now, when I started, I mentioned that uh, one of the ways you might want to use this is to instantiate a list. Well, let's go back over to our C-sharp code and make that happen. Come down here one more line. And we're going to do var l equals new list. And in order to do a, a, a list, we have to have some type of type. So we're going to use object because all of our uh, types, uh, all of our anonymous types that we're creating, uh, automatically derived from the type object and that's the only thing we really know here so that's what we're going to use. And now open curly brace, closing curly brace, closing semicolon, now we have an empty list of objects and now we're going to go in and initialize our list of objects. So new first name equals Dave, last name equals Bush, new first name equals Henry last name equals Schmidt now we have a list with two of the same type of objects in it and we can use that and do our data binding now over in our VB code, 
uh, have a little quirk here. Uh, so far, I haven't been able to find any way of instantiating a list in line uh, like I did with C sharp. But we can instantiate an object array. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do dim l as object array equals and our opening curly brace and our closing curly brace. We'll do the closing curly brace later. New with dot first name equals Dave dot last name equals Bush comma line continuation character new with first name equals Henry last name equals Schmidt and then close off our list. And that creates an object array with two types of objects in it that are exactly the same. And then you could assign that to uh, a list object if you have a, if you really need the list object. Uh, that it will still work for you. Like I said, if you know of anybody or know of any way to get that to work uh, in line with a list, leave me a comment. I'd be happy, uh, really happy to know about that. Now, finally, the last thing we need to point out here with uh, this object initialization or this uh, anonymous type stuff is that you might think that creating an anonymous type here and then another anonymous type here is going to give us a whole bunch of extra, especially if they have a hundred of those, a whole bunch of extra intermediate language code. And what happens is the .NET compiler is smart enough, for the, the VB or the c compiler is smart enough to merge all of these together. It says, oh wait, you know, I just did a first name and a last name that were both strings, so I'll just create one object and use that for each of these rather than creating uh, a brand new class every time I do this new with statement in VB or my new curly brace statement in C-sharp.